Hello Al Shaddai, I hope you guys are doing well. For the next four weeks we're going to be giving special attention to the matter of prayer. The return, a time of nationwide prayer for South Africa, will be taking place on the 26th of September 2020. The sole focus of this prayer initiative is to seek the supernatural intervention of God for the sake of South Africa. Revival. If you haven't yet signed up for this incredible moment in our nation's history, it's time to do so. Please encourage your cell group to do the same, so that all of South Africa can be filled with the voices of God's people, crying out for His kingdom to come on the earth as it is in heaven. Prayer is one of the greatest gifts that God has given His body. Along with His written word, it is His primary line of communication with us. It's a two-way channel whereby we develop intimacy with the Lord, discover His purposes for our lives and the world around us, and legislate heaven on earth. It is undeniably a foundational aspect of our discipleship under Jesus that we cannot go without. Even Jesus, the Son of God, was dependent on a thriving prayer life with His Father while He walked the earth. Luke 5.16 says, But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. If Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, committed to frequent prayer, it goes without saying that we should make the ministry of prayer a top priority in our own lives too. It is the objective of the next four weeks worth of cell group focuses to develop our understanding and our trust, our practice of prayer as the following four things. Communing with God, co-laboring with God, conquering the enemy, and consistency throughout life. I pray that you will enjoy your adventures in the Word of God and that this will prove to be massively fruitful in your walk with the Lord and your impact on the world for His glory. Remember, no one is greater than their prayer life. So this is step one in our prayer life, communing with God. As previously mentioned, Jesus would often withdraw to lonely places to pray. While these times of prayer would have included prayers focused on things other than communion with God, we can be sure that Jesus prioritized developing an intimate relationship with His Father in prayer. We know that Jesus was intimately acquainted with His Father because He was able to say in John 5.19 that the Son can do nothing by Himself. He can do only what He sees His Father doing because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. Clearly, Jesus had learned the ways of His Father because of His times of proximity with God. Prayer enables us to commune with God so that we get to know His heart for us and have our hearts changed by His. This week we're going to be looking at Exodus 33 verses 7 to 23. This is a long passage and I won't be reading it for you now, but you may want to just pause the video and read it by yourself before continuing. But what we can see is that Moses was a man who enjoyed communion with God. So I just want to point out a few observations from this passage that were particularly interesting to me. The first thing that we see from this passage is that, like Jesus, Moses set aside dedicated time for communion with God. Verses 7 to 9 show us that Moses was deliberate in his pursuit of communion with God, going so far as to pitch a tent a good distance from the Israelite camp so that he could meet with God. He even named this tent the Tent of Meeting. The Hebrew text implies that this was a tent wherein Moses would meet God at an appointed time and place. The name says it all, the tent of meeting. Communion with God takes devotion and dedicated time to develop. The second thing we see is that the agenda for communion prayer with God is friendship. While I'm sure that God has spent much time instructing Moses on how to lead the Israelite people, it appears that these times of meeting were centered around friendship. We see that in verse 11. Our times of communion prayer with God cannot be consumed by business matters. Friendship is not built around to-do list. Friendship is built upon heart-to-heart -heart love and quality time with God. The third thing we see is that communion prayer makes us nice to be around for God and others. Verses 12 to 17 reveal that God delighted in Moses' friendship. He said of Moses, I am pleased with you and I know you by name in verse 17. If we desire for the favor and the continued tangible presence of God to rest over our lives wherever we go, which sets us apart from the world around us and draws us to the God we worship, then we must prioritize communion prayer with God. It is important to remember that God can only ever entrust favor to friends. It is far too valuable to give to anybody else. 
And the last thing we see is that communion prayer is a highway to the glory of God. In verses 18 to 23, we, some, we see some of the most profound words shared between God and a person in all of biblical history. Can you imagine the depths of relationship that must have existed between Moses and God in order for Moses to feel comfortable asking God Almighty, the one before whom mountains melt like wax, to reveal His glory? Communion prayer prepares us to encounter the glory of God, which is His goodness, in ways that we never could otherwise. So that's just wrapping it up there, and I really hope that you guys enjoy the next four weeks diving into prayer, and this week discovering what it means to be in communion prayer with the Lord. Bless you.